in the upper left this is not the gsl but in the upper left in the red he's playing for twisted minds it's classic the bottom right in the blue he's playing for no one back from the military now let's see what he's like it's rogue let's make sure that we know that this is esl not the gsls we see what is this 50 yeah 15 or 16 18 17. this is your standard zbco well actually no this was not i'm sorry i was looking at just the pool timing but rogue is able to go he gets his hatchery down at his natural which really is not crazy it does mean that he sent the drone a little bit earlier that or classic when that when was the later scout i was paying more attention to the fact that we were not the gsl we are the we are esl this is an esl event but here we go this is this is rogue he's back from the military and i i know he played a little bit he played a uh best of seven show match versus Oliveira on saturday i think it was um friday no on friday on friday where he lost 4 1 to Oliveira. I didn't really get a chance to look at the games, but you know, he, I know he did that. Uh, he made a run in EPT Korea last week as well, but it was a uh, round of 32 getting knocked out or round of 16 getting knocked out. I think something like that. He, I, I saw people say he looked okay, but I, this is my first time taking a look at the person that many people, you know, Artosis would consider the go to StarCraft. And sorry. My first time taking a look at him since he came back from the military. I, I'm aware I've seen Dark Wind World Championships. You know, I've cast Dark uh, at things. But I'm excited to see what we, we're going to see. But on the other hand, Classic, he's not the round of four of the GSL this year. That's stats, and that's hero. And two Protoss in the round of four GSL? No Zergs. Tell me who's in by now. Uh, but more importantly, Classic has been one of this, these banner carriers of Protoss in the last... That is okay. That is oh, um, has been one of these banner carriers of Protoss in the last little bit of time. Here has obviously been number one. You got Max Packs and in, in the America or not in the America in the Americas in Europe, and so you got them. Uh, but Classic's been this other guy, right? As uh, the Adept's gonna shade out, run away. Uh, Classic's been this other guy that has been playing Protoss a little bit differently so we, we kind of have three style schools coming in uh, building their way into Korea right now which is awesome it's super important because you got you got this guy hero right who in in pvz he's gonna go blink stalker he's gonna go you know oracle into blink stalker all right that that's the style that he's pioneered and he's developed since then it's not just that oracle blink stalker thing where he won Oh, what was it? It was like 30 series in a row against Zerg or something leading into losing to Dark in the um, in Dreamhack Valencia last year. I think that's what it was. Uh, I don't remember remember if the number is quite right. But anyway, something like that. So he was like 97% win rate against Zerg from January of it up until June of uh, last year, of two years ago. But... Because these oracles are going to look to dive in. Hey, that's a free drone. They're going to get a ling. Ooh, a couple more. Very nice here, Classic. This is a great angle for him to find. He's going to get seven drones. Doesn't lose a single oracle. And that's actually really a solid as Classic looks to find his way into the mid game. But what I was going to say was, so you got this hero guy who goes and really leans into this Blink Stalker, mass Blink Stalker things. And that's great. He does a really solid job and he wins 96% of his PVZs for six months. And then you got Classic, who has started to develop this much more conservative uh, Robotech style. Where you, Again, this is not something that Hero's not playing, not something that Stats is not playing, but Classic's been playing a lot of this Blink Stalker 3 or 4 Colossus, and it doesn't even matter. It doesn't have to. It's, it's not just 3 base. It's not just an all-in. He's been playing it in, uh, even against Hive Tech. He's been making it look pretty good. And then you got Stats as well, who just plays very defensively. But the fact that we have three schools of Protoss in Korea is pretty killer. Even as we, I mean, this is a plus one Blink Stalker timing out of Classic. So even as I talk about different schools, again, it is, we're, this is what I was saying as, as part of this as well. 
well it's not like they don't play other styles right it's not like hero doesn't can't play classic like classic on occasion classic can't play like hero on occasion uh etc but regardless we got the oracles they've gotten a decent amount of damage i think it's like eight total drones dead seven from the oracle one from this adept hit squad fourth base on the way for classic and kind of an interesting position but i guess oh yeah actually that is really surprising to see him take it there you can wall off this spot and then you can go in as these adepts oh they're just going to be able to escape maybe ah another they're in the drone line there we go a couple more workers are going to fall make it four or five maybe let's see yeah it's going to be five well no oh, never mind he didn't target it down so four total drones go down for three adepts but i i gotta say i'm really surprised to see classic taking this base on the left side you can kind of wall this off very nicely the you wall the you wall this choke you can wall this high ground and then there's only one spot Azur can really attack through it can be really a, a solid spot so I feel like we generally see Protoss players taking this base this by uh by contrast is a whole lot more open Zerg can posture on the high ground with lurkers they can attack the middle there's a much bigger arc that they're attacking into but I guess if you're classic the flip side of that is this is this base is closer to the pro or to the Zerg setup so by going on that side but you have closer warp ends without having to force a proxy and yes this is hydraling that rogue is going for and it's a decent amount of hydraling but it wasn't it's not at the point just yet where the army can just force him back this army from classic is still very solid he's going to try to wedge his way up the high ground creeps getting denied for the time being as well so it's really hard for rogue to force forward down the ramp but yes he's got the high ground but without any sort of creep it becomes really hard behind this classic charge plus two he blinks on top of a couple queens is going to knock them down but charge plus plus two attack plus one armor double forge play from classic here we're not seeing that robo transition just yet and you do have to be careful of rogues lurkers but already rogue supply is just not looking good he's lost 43 were i mean granted zerg units are far cheaper but the resource lost here is pretty rough already it's a thousand resources more all the links are going to go down and I fear that we might have just hit critical pass the stalkers already classic doing a really nice job of saying yeah rogue I don't know that you're up to date with the meta this blink stalker idea that we're seeing granted blink stalkers have never been a totally new thing but this blink stalker idea that hero introduced happened after you went to the military bud it's been heavily refined since then let's see if you're prepared to deal with it so for now rogue he's trying to posture he's working on getting that lurker count up five of them on the way and lurkers are very good against the stalker style you well stalkers they have armor <laughs> lurkers do bonus damage to armor they do it in splash stalkers tend to clump up quite a bit you take a lot of damage but for now classic he's taking the gold base on gold nora as well doing a really nice job of developing that economy Rogue, he's got his fifth base on the way as well, but this is not at the gold base. So even as we say, wow, you know, Classic's doing a really nice job. He's putting a lot of pressure on. Rogue's doing a pretty good job of defending here, right? He's got three lurkers on the left side. He's got lurkers on the right side behind the mineral line. More lurkers on the way. He's doing a really solid job of defending this aggression from Classic. And now Classic, he's going to try to target the fourth base down. <laughs> oh, man, that is so annoying when the Protoss player is just like, or when the player you're playing against is just like look damn the losses here i'm gonna go kill this base there's nothing you can do about it and yeah they're gonna get it and to be honest classic didn't lose a ton two stalkers four zealots is not a massive amount and again given the fact that yeah he's down on workers technically but oh he and he got the north side base as well so this is a three base rogue against a five base classic i mean technically the fourth base is on the way and oh that's a lot of lurkers here pretty undefended but stalkers cannot blink on top of that one that is a massive trade for rogue and this is what rogue's going to be looking to do right uh it's not as well that and some counter attacks not as going down to the main base a bunch of zealots should warp in though and this i don't think is going to really accomplish much of anything yeah it's just going to get shut down but classics pretty much it pretty much needs to turtle on these four bases that he has at the moment he doesn't really have this egress point all too quickly he is very much locked in by these stalkers and by these zealots 
Uh, lurkers need to burrow up, and they're going to eat, well, a decent amount of them. That's a... Mm, mm, that doesn't feel good. That is three lurkers probably going down, probably. And... Yeah, the fourth base is finally up again. We're going to see a 90 skill on the other side. Tons of lurkers warping in here, or... Going in, I'm... I'm really... They're not going to warp in. They're going to follow the Nidus in. And that's a bunch of dead... Well... That's a ton of dead stuff. So, Nidus goes down to the main base as well here. Classic is attacking in on the other side. Classic is getting ripped apart here. Nidus gets a ton of damage done. This attack on the left side... Yeah, it kind of breaks through. And by kind of, I mean, not really. Lurkers do a great job in defending. Lurkers on the other side doing a great job in attacking here zealots finally joining the fray but yeah they're gonna get on top of this this is not cost effective stalkers warp in as well finally the angle's gonna get found and there is detection but that was an expensive cleanup that was a messy as hell cleanup and by the way there are more <laughs> there's a queen in the main base as well just the one but gonna do a little bit of damage i guess and actually more units are gonna start to show up here rogue since his opportunity he's got more queens that well they're gonna try to target these uh, these oracles down there actually yeah they're gonna get one they're gonna get the second i think classic's dead dogs are gonna continue to warp in queens are still here looking for transfuses looking for whatever they can find this main base is gone guys there's more here all the tech all the production of classic that he's got in the main base is just totally going away classic's had the tempo for the last uh, long time Classic's had the tempo for the last significant amount of time in this game, and it has not mattered at all. Another knight is heading the main base. More and more lurkers are going to show up here. Classic going all in on the other side, but, well, he's got really good upgrades. These are three two blink stalkers against just plus two hydras, plus zero links. Rogue's going to eventually have to find his way back, but the trick is there is no production for our Protoss player. He's got like two gates. Yeah, Rogue. He takes game one. Actually, I, I said quicker hatch. Oh, this is just a six. This is just an 18 hatch or a, yeah, sorry, a 16 hatch, right? Classic, he went gate scout. So that does slow your time. That does slow your block timing a little bit. It does you know, prevent you from blocking the base on the other side. It's a much more economical opening. It does get you your wall a little bit faster, but more importantly, what it does is it sends your drone at your probe out a little bit later it, it loses less of that initial mining time which means that you get workers faster you get your natural just slightly faster so yeah you don't put pressure you don't put economic pressure on the zerg early by forcing them to take their third base which actually matters a decent amount you lose i don't know five seconds of mining time when as the the drone has to run from the main to the third base as you're getting that set up and that is time that's not mining that's quote unquote quote unquote you know mining time lost if you kind of want to if you want to consider it like that so it does actually have make a noticeable i guess maybe not a massive significant difference but makes a notable difference in, in how efficient a zerg player can be so the fact that classic's not going to try to stop that i guess i guess it's not it feels like it hasn't been as common as like every game like we we saw earlier in the year it kind of builds oscillate back and forth but i gotta say I, i'm pretty surprised that classic is not putting more kind of mental pressure on rogue in the in this setup just by like yeah he went for the blink stalker thing and it worked very well for the most part it was making ton it was finding tons of value and then he got you know nightist and what are you gonna do but you know rogue is recently back from the military i think he's been pretty much playing things from the moment he got back and the fact that he even held a candle to classic is kind of crazy i remember when hero came back and when classic came back and when stats came back which kind of like, gumio came back and they were all playing these things and none of them was winning games you know they were none of them were winning show matches against a former world champ <laughs> Oliveira is and i love Oliveira. i love the story of Oliveira, but he's definitely our, our kind of weakest quote-unquote world champion uh, but you know taking a map off Oliveira, looking i think fairly decent in his uh series last week whoever he played all right so lane's actually going to show up in the main base here get up not much more than a decent scout but really the important thing here is that the oracles even as they will kill this Pulsar beams have to get turned on. So this Oracle spends a lot of energy running across the map. Trying to see something. Right. 
So in game one, we saw Classic, the way he started that game, and again, he started it really nicely. He was at times up in supply against against the Protoss player. Like, he started this game beautifully in game one. And, you know, he's not going to be able to get that quite as much here in this game number two. Oracles are going to be later across the map. They're going to have less aggregate energy. But, you know, again, it's not like Classic spent the entirety of his energy on the Oracles and uh, in that first dive in last time. So we're going to see what he's going to get here. Rogue, he's got a queen in position. Second one can rotate over. Durns are going to get pulled and it's going to be three at the moment. He's not going to catch the transfer and with, well, Queen's fairly well positioned. Not going to get all that much done. Thinks about sending the Adepts in. And, oh, that's a bit of a misshade, actually. They ran a little bit too far forward. These Adepts will die. Yeah, Oracles may try to save. Well, actually, well, maybe. No, yeah, two of the Adepts are going to go down. Third one gets not a lot. So this opening from Classic is not incredible. Ah, yes, it was uh, Nightmare and, and Rogue that played last week. Got it. Okay. And when we talk about players, okay, so I'm being told uh, Zest went four months. So like, who's coming back? Because I, I had this vague sense that Rogue, Trap, and, and Zest were all going to be back roughly similar times. And so I Zest went four months before Rogue. Um, we don't know whether he's back yet, whether he's like completed his service and just is done with StarCraft or has a longer service because the, the time that you, I want to say the time you can spend in the Korean military is, is somewhat variable. Um, is somewhat variable. Tras, uh, Trap should also be back soon though. We live in a time where the map pool's pretty rough for Zerg. And we live also in a time where a bunch of top tier Protoss players are coming back. The greatest Zerg of all time and Serral's going to military. Protoss players, Protoss players are going to be eating good for the next couple months. But that has to start with Classic. If Rogue's going to come back in 2-0 Classic, like a two weeks back from the military, then uh, maybe, maybe we got problems. I don't really know. But again, Classic has been very good. He's taken down a lot of top tier Zerg players. But for now, Rogue, he's on his four bases. He's going... He's going Spire. He's going very quick Lair. Or he's going very quick Hive. Maybe. He's got Infestation Pit on the way. This is just going to be... It looks like he's going to get himself set up for maybe Broodlords later on. But this just feels like a Lurker... Like a, sp uh, a Hive Lurker rush. And Classic for his part. You know, not doing all that much. I'm sorry. I've been talking about storylines. That enough that I haven't talked enough about what is happening in this game. Because what is happening in this game is truly fascinating. It's double... You know, look, first of all, double Stargate Carrier. Second of all, Colossus being made at the same time. We don't have a, well, we do have a Twilight, right? Charge is done. There's no blink. And what I really want to pay attention to here is we see what's happening is it's, you know, four gateways, two Stargates, a Robo. And again, Classic being very greedy, taking this fourth base as well on very few units. What I want to know is whether this is the Max Packs approach and right, the Neve approach of going for this amount of stuff then you throw down a bunch of gateways and you hit with kind of eight gateway warp ins behind this or as by the way rogue did scout this and i guess that's in part why you got the spire uh or whether this is just gonna be robo carrier and that's it like this is just late game tech from the very beginning and there really is not a whole lot that but there's no th not much thoughts on transition and I don't know. Okay, so apparently military service is typically 18 to 24 months in Korea. So there, yeah, there is, there is some variability. That's what I was thinking. It was like, it was like 18 months, two years, depending on uh, what exactly your service was. It was like, if you're doing civilian service, I think it's it's longer um, than if you're doing military, something like that. I guess in this kind of idea that if you're in the military, technically you're putting your life on the line the way you aren't if you're doing kind of civilian th or more civilian stuff, which is, is a thing, civil service. Um, but anyway, 
Classic here just sitting at home. He's got Storm on the way. This is disgusting that he's been able, that he's been allowed to get away with this. We, we should be clear about this. We're 10 minutes in. Classic's at 167 supply. Storm on the way, plus two, plus one on the ground. But he's sitting here on two Colossus, four carrier. And that is pretty much it. Three Immortals, actually no, three Immortals as well. He has this incredibly powerful, this incredibly expensive composition. But for now, Storm is done. <laughs> Corruptors are going to show up. And they're going to say, hey, uh, those carriers. Yeah, you don't really have any anti-air, do you, Classic? That, no, you don't. So he's going to dive on top. Yeah, Storm is still here. But he just got two carriers for just about free. There was not enough anti-air right there. Like six Corruptors went down, but it's two dead carriers. Heavy damage on the third one. You're not complaining about that one. If, if you're rogue, he just shows up and says, hey, don't mind if I do. I'll take these. And by the way, he's on 97 drones. His economy's doing really nicely. He's got the gold base. He's got this north side base. So Rogue, he was a little bit slow on his development. I'm taking that, uh, taking that fifth base, but he's done a really nice job of identifying what exactly is in store here and really and going for it. So cutting away at the interceptors because that is value added. And <laughs> I guess Rogue has the spare APM. Uh, but for now, Classic's now effectively all in. He, or not all in, but he's hitting his timing. He's got two one on the ground. He's got these Archons. He's got Storm. He's still sitting at four carriers, two Colossus. And even as Rogue goes and snipes a couple carriers early on, this is still a very scary situation that Rogue's going to find himself in. That is a powerful army. He doesn't really have any Vipers just yet. It's just six Lurkers, 17 carriers, a bunch of links as he goes and cancels this north side base. And more importantly, he's going to force Classic back. He's going to knock down Zealots. Fine. The rest of these links will fall, but it's all about forcing classic into awkward positions tries to dive on top of the colossus will not get down but he bathed it bathed in the storm for quite a bit so i love this move from Cla from from rogue he's just diving in whatever the he doesn't think his opponent's in the right spot on a ramp on a he got a dangling unit and he goes and snipes a colossus snipes a carrier snipes two carriers what I would love to see with this aggressive positioning that we're seeing with this vision that Rogue is getting set up because he's got really solid vision. Nice. Oh, nice fine positioning as well. There is not enough surface area. I, I know it's a small thing, but I really like the, the, the spine setup that he has. That being said, as we look at the setup, I, the lack of Vipers is, is just really surprising to me. I think Rogue is Rogue has traditionally had a really good spellcaster control in this late game eh, maybe not Sura level but one of the best out there and uh, certainly better than better than say dark was kind of the, the comparison rogues late game late game control is truly second to none and we're seeing him do it here again I mean we got all the spores up he's got this really nice creep spread he's did a really good job of canceling this base once I think it was a cancel not a kill yeah it was a cancel um but Zerga late game is not nearly as good as it once was uh, I don't think anyone's going to argue with that. And the other thing that, again, is very surprising to me is that there is no, there are no Vipers. Uh, imagine, like, you have Vision right here. You have Positioning right here. Yeah, you know, High Templar have been buffed a little bit over time. Vipers have been nerfed a little bit. But Vipers are good, guys. <laughs> and they would like, they allow you to pick the army apart. They, they do a really solid job of that. So, again, I'm just a little bit surprised. But Rogue... Regardless of whether I'm surprised or not, this is how he wants to play at the moment. He's got his second Spire on the way. He's got plus two air attack. A little bit of supply block. Lost an Overlord or two, I think. But he's starting to, he's doing a good job. He's developing that economy. He, you know, would like to take the rich gas base eventually. Okay, so actually, I got some more news about Trap and uh, Trap and Zest, actually. So, uh, we know that, apparently, and this is, I'm getting this from Maddox, I think, who is uh, extremely knowledgeable about the Korean scene, giving as he lives there and serves as a producer. Um, but, I'm being told that we know Zest, we don't know when Zest went in, only that he's been serving recently. Uh, but for Trap... He said he wouldn't come back when he got to the military, which I had forgotten about. I thought that was only innovation that kind of explicitly said, yeah, no more, no more StarCraft. I'm totally done. 
as I, <laughs> this is an interesting little run by using the using the colossus to get high ground vision but the scary thing is this army on the left side on the right side that is a bunch of immortals a bunch of archons storms i mean this army is this is an army that busts through static events that busts through a ton of lurkers and by the way this army finally by the way we got a viper on the way this army it's only in terms of anti-ground force it's a literally only lurkers and i guess spores technically is a kind of this buffer zone so the army doesn't get right on top of it but i mean this is a crazy setup we have here from rogue i haven't seen someone i really have not seen someone go this mass lurker in quite a while and also uh, as uh as people we're seeing people say in chat the fact that i mean is he kind of these are plus these are plus one links does he have adrenal okay they okay that explains so much <laughs> i didn't see adrenal but yeah the adrenal's done so he almost shuts down plus three air attack which would be, would be which would be a pretty big deal let's be real here carriers each carrier has eight interceptors you go and you it's worth a lot one could argue that play each additional air attack upgrade applies to carriers six times or eight times over which is again a big deal is that storm I'm just gonna tickle i'm not not gonna get a ton done but classics again taking the lead on the on the base count he's got north side tons of static events here that are gonna be uh, is pretty breakable actually it's only one pile i'm covering about half these uh about half the the cannons but Classic's taking bottom right, so is Rogue. A north side base, not getting taken just yet. But Rogue is really is a nice abducts there. Yeah, feedbacks are really solid, and I think a Viper died. Yeah, single Viper died, but got a Tempest, got some other stuff. But with a lack of Vipers here, because again, we're only looking at two Vipers. Dude, they got to get their energy back, and they're they're just not. Okay, we're gonna see. <laughs> That's a dead Infester as well. Uh, we are seeing Rogue go into this late game composition, this late game spellcaster thing that he was so good at when he went off to the military. But again, seeing this number of lurkers is pretty surprising. Yeah, broodlords have been nerfed. But you feel like at this point that you do want the broodlords and you don't necessarily want the lurkers because while broodlords, they do really nicely against all these immortals. They do really nicely against all these archons in a way that lurkers really, really don't. So we're going to see. Oh, there we go. Dive on top of the Tempest. Once again, that's a good storm placing behind it. The fact that the vipers are just here and they're not getting their energy back there is a there's a hatchery right here but there, there's an extractor right here you can go and get your energy back they're not doing that anyway plus three is now done we're gonna have maybe plus three we're gonna get those armor up, upgrades getting started fairly quickly this looks like Lurkers, what'd they get? Oh, Mothership, minus 300, minus 300. That'll go down. They got a couple Tempests. I'm bad. Rogue on the retreat. Starting to eke out some value. If we look at resources lost, yeah, well, actually, I guess it's about even. I thought he was going to have uh, maybe found a little bit more. He's aware of the north of the right side base. He's aware of the left side base. Now there's our greater spire on the way now we're getting more lurkers in now we're getting plus two uh, plus two flyer armor like we're starting to see rogue develop that tech just a little bit better <laughs> some portal is very stuck he's not allowed to walk through that choke not with all these changelings here uh all right so tempest on the right side tempest on the left side tempest in the middle we're gonna see now oh, yeah, three oracle pick off that's a way to eat got value i have to go at nine I have a heart. I have a meeting about the. We have our production meeting for uh, for the spring regional for the spring spring online regional, and uh, it's going to be at nine o'clock. I'm meeting with ESL people, so you know I got to go at some point, and I'm starting to get worried here that this series might make us go, might take me up until nine. I, this doesn't feel like it's going anywhere soon. Nice feedbacks actually coming out of class or coming out of classic. Does still lose a Tempest, but there are still three. There are still four right there. They can still continue to poke and power through. And I've, I got to say, I, the one thing that it feels like we're really lacking, and actually, may, no, is there only one Viper in this? I can't click on it. Um, we know there's more than one Viper in the stack. Oh, I, I guess what Rogue's doing here, and I'm, you know, I know I'm criticizing him for not really getting energy back. But I guess what he's doing here in part, 
And th this makes some level of sense. As lurkers on the right side are going to slowly eke away, the, you know, poke away at this base. Um, I think what we're seeing him do in part, as this Lingrun buy is going to get nothing done, is it's like, look, I could go fuel my Vipers up the entire way, but then feedback's going to get a lot of damage done. Or I can just get like one abduction. And I am so close to my bases. I am so, so close to structures that I can go and... As, by the way, Rogue has multiple lines of spores. Yeah, you're not getting on top of this. But anyway, uh, I can go back and I can get my energy back very easily. So I'm not going to have the spam, right? I'm not going to have the spam of a ton, a ton, a ton of abducts all, all at once. Which may take away from the burstiness of the fight. As that, oh, base is going to go down. But I'm going to have enough that I, yeah, and a, a feedback's not going to kill me while still I'm getting a decent amount of value. So we're going to see nice feedbacks. They are going to pop one of these, uh, one of these investors very quickly. Fungals are solid here. And now, oh, abducts on the high ground. We're going to see a bunch of dead, dead carriers falling. This is a great fight. This is a fantastic fight here coming out a row great abducts on top of everything fungals as well runs forward and the storms are zoning to be sure but this was a dead tempest four dead carriers two dead immortals for not a whole lot yeah we saw an infester go down yeah we saw a viper go down yeah we saw technically some lurkers fall that was a precipitous and I mean a precipitous gap I love, look at this fall in supply yeah rogues rebuilding a ton of stuff all at once but Look at that drop right there. That's off a cliff. And also importantly, Rogue is starting to get there in terms of upgrades. Protoss Sky Army is a Ling run by is going to go and shut down the, the, the Cyber Core, which is actually really nice. Uh, although he's not going to get plus two very quickly, but this is now a wide open area. Yeah, it's, it's only plus one links, but they do have adrenal, so you might as well call them plus four links. And... Okay, the, I guess with the, the carriers coming back, they're really not going to accomplish a ton, but Classic has more space on the map now. That's kind of the big thing. He, or Rogue is much more space on the map. Classic was doing a great job of pressuring, of, of forcing his way forward. And now Rogue's in this scenario where he's halfway. I mean, look at these spore lines, right? He just has so much here. But he can play on the Classic's half of the map. He can start to posture and play on these cliffs looking for really good up ducks. And this is exactly what he's... He, yeah, <laughs> look at this. The mothership's going to pop, and it has to be defended. It's immediately going to get jumped on top here. Minus, goodbye. So long. What a great play there from Rogue. He knew exactly what was going to happen. He knew the time. He was just waiting for it. He had the vision. And yeah, he's going to lose the Viper for his troubles. Vipers don't cost the same as motherships. That's how that goes. Although these storm drops, that's a decent amount of dead drones. Car oh, okay. Corruptors are just not going to try to chase that down. I thought that was... Oh, man. I thought that storm drop was better than it was going to be. It's only three dead drones. I really thought a lot more were going to fall. Where's this mothership on the way? Okay. It's being built a little bit safer of a nexus this time. Classic has learned his lesson. This game's not going anywhere fast. And by the way... <laughs> The probes are just, yeah, okay, yeah, Rogue's gonna clean it up. But the probes are just sitting there. That's hilarious. It's like, yeah, come kill me. <laughs> Make me dead if you want. And in the fact, yeah, he won. Uh, actually, a decent amount of interceptors just hit the deck. Uh, nice fungal. I love this. When you get to this late game, it's like, yeah, I, I want more. I want more army supply. I don't want as many workers. And then you just, I, I love, by the way, Rogue, he doesn't feel the need to sacrifice his drones. It doesn't need to happen. Why would I sacrifice my drones when I can turn them into another spore line? What I can get. Okay, how many spores? I know I'm two minutes in the future. Ooh, a little bit better that time. And <laughs> storms the larva too. Potentially, potentially pretty impactful. Feedbacks go down on the vipers and forcing them back for the time being. That's a good fungal. Oh my God, that's a good fungal. All the high Templar are dead. And well, uh, hey, here's a fight. <laughs> Rogue, have fun. Archons are going to try to sit underneath this and they're going to go, they'll do a decent job. But yeah, local maneuver, you got to run away from this one. And luckily it's into a it's into a position that the Archons can still buffer, but there was no storm energy whatsoever. That was like eight dead high Templar. That was four dead carriers, two dead Tempest, six dead high Templar. And now, yeah, all the production is going to fall down. Look at this here. What a move from Dark all of a sudden. Even if he loses a bunch of corruptors, I truly don't think he cares. He shut down so many Stargates. 
He's gonna dive on top of this army as well. High Templar are here. They don't have the energy. Sure, fine. <laughs> Go try to defend this. Rogue has two zero. <sighs> I don't want to get ahead of myself. Classic is 16,000 minerals, 8,000 gas. He can rebuild what he's lost. But there is no fleet beacon. There are five Stargates. Sure, he can build a bunch of voids. He has done so much here in the last 30 seconds, in the last minute. He's up 7,000 resources at this point. And yeah, the bank is not as good. But that's fine. <laughs> Rogue is playing so much more efficiently in this game. Classic, 150 supply. Now the one downside is what we got here. Is whether Classic can go take advantage of this. I, or whether Rogue can take advantage of this. I don't think he can. As somehow. Nice job there. This <laughs> War Prism is going to try to find its way forward. It does actually find its way through the walls. But uh, Lings are like plus one. These these Cracklings are there. They're going to show up into the main base. Yeah, there, there are spores from the Oracle Harass early on. And more importantly, Corruptors will eventually force this into a position. I think where the spore kills it. And now, yeah, okay, so Templar Archives on the way once again. That was also a victim of this. Uh, Templar Archives on the way. Lurker's now finally going to move forward, starting to see. Oh. They don't have the range, so never mind. They're not going to lay siege. I thought they might actually do something, but apparently not. As, by the way, War Prism. Did it go down? Yeah, War Prism went down. Okay. Oh, no, no. It got out. War Prism actually did find its way out now and here's the problem a lot of the lurkers are on the right side nothing that really fights the air or the ground excuse me is, is on the left side at the moment luckily they're they're fairly mobile but i feel like i would like to go see his uh see, oh sport died mm, mm -mm, unfortunate but what i think we're gonna what i would like to see would be the inclusion of a you know maybe a couple night swarms not even aggressively I, it could be nice but oh fungals Oh, again, yes, again, the feedbacks are solid, but these fungals are killers right now. What do we have? We've lost nine High Templar over the course of this game. I think that was, yeah, two more just died right then. Rogue has been so good at just fungling and killing. And by the way, this is even with the damage nerf on fungal. But he's done such a good job of just fungling and killing these these uh, these High Templar over and over again. Even without the, the Broodlings, that you really is traditionally that, that thing where you go and you fungal and then the Broodlings kill off the rest. But we haven't really seen that. By the way, I'd like to see... Yeah, there we go. Hydra should just go target this down first. Uh, unfortunately, it means this... Oh, gonna stay alive? No, okay, there, there's a spore. Um, I was gonna say, you know, traditionally it's the... Uh, you, you, or, you know, you would want to go and you want to target the War Prism first. So the moment the... Your units are under, under attack is when the War Prism's dead is kind of the goal but now rogue yes another tempest he deals with a reinforcing line now he's a little bit out of position here but he's got microbial shroud to make sure these lurkers don't die 19 dead probes based on the north side is gonna get taken out and <laughs> rogue's gonna mine for minna that's not a lot of money there rogue not anymore but any money he can take from his opponent is solid especially as he's sitting here and he's trading 10,000 resources better I think you're going to talk to a lot of Zerg players and they're going to say that Protoss in the late game is really good. Is really hard to deal with. Especially with all the 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 Broodlord nerfs and the Viper nerfs and I guess we didn't get that High Templar buff, but everything that's happened is making uh, late game Protoss a little bit better, late game Zerg a little bit worse, fungal damage nerf, things like that. And Rogue is sitting here like two weeks back from the military. Playing a beautiful late game P is ZVP, and again, the game's not over yet, and the classic has a ludicrous bank. But he's playing I, like he looks like he should win this. As a yeah, that that that's not a base. <laughs> that's not a base you're allowed to take classic. You're gonna have to pretty much subsist on your on your on your bank at this point. And yeah, twenty thousand resources almost is really big. It's a significant deal is now finally we're gonna see this base slowly mined from spines are gonna show up and actually there are no spines defending this right side base that really has a lot of resources left. So that's a little bit awkward. Pressure on the left side as well. Lots of Tempest Mothership pops the pops the detection or pops the cloaking. There we go. Fungal's not really gonna land, but my crippled shrouds are there. That's a decent fungal actually. We're gonna dive on top. Feedbacks are fantastic from classic. And again, despite the fact that Rogue has traded 
so much better. These investors, yeah, they're just going to give the spot up. There's not enough static defense here, not at the moment. As much as Rogue has traded so much better, this is still a terrifying army from Classic, and he can still... Rogue's army, right, is worth just about what his bank is worth. Anyone lose their, their setup at this point, well, it's just, it's very expensive to replace. Storms are really nice. Fungals, I oh, mean, these High Templar. One more fungal kills a lot of these High Templar. Oh, and I forgot. I said, you know, what's our support count at? It was a lot higher than 52, I think. But we're at 52 right now. I think it was probably closer to like 75. There's a lot of decent amount of spores has been killed. Like 30 to 34 dead spores. I think 75 was actually probably the right number. Uh, but this pressure here is starting to be very effective from Classy. He's knocking down a ton of this static defense. Now, he did lose the gold base, but it's not... Uh, 71 minerals remaining in that base. It's not really a lot. Ooh, that's nice, actually. Knocking that, that Oracle down. Classic keeping it far back to make sure that even if he loses one, he can still get a little bit more. Storm zones once again. Classic. These Hydras, with these three, three Hydras are going to knock down again. A couple more next side. And the important thing about these next side, by the way, is... Oh, nice pickoff right there. We're going to see a bunch of carriers go down. Yeah, sure. Invisibility is technically invincibility, but there are overseers here. So not really. It's not truly invincible. or not really invincibility in this game. And now, well... That cooldown, uh, that ability is on a cooldown for... Man, I didn't realize quite how, how short that was. That's on cooldown for another 20 seconds or so. I guess it's just gotten about 50% uptime. 30% uptime, probably. A classic doesn't want to attack, does not want to attack through this choke. This is a ton of lurkers right here. This is a very small choke. And classic's ability, uh, yeah, he's mined out of the north side. He's classic. All of a sudden, classic's got this big bank and to be sure don't, don't that is very true the storms on these hydras is gonna show yeah no hydras don't want to fight through this choke either but all of a sudden classic's income is gone he's got three mineral patches three more mineral patches long distance mining he's got what is this a, a thousand in this base another two another 400 in this base there are like 2,000-ish minerals left remaining on the map for Classic that he's that he has available to him to mine. And that is just not a com that is not a comfortable feeling. Even as we say, yeah, he's Okay, Storm of the Changelings. It's like, well, yeah, okay, Storm of the Changelings. Like, even as he's gotten this 18,000 mineral bank, he doesn't have a lot of gas. And granted. Oh, he's not mining gas at all. There is no gas remaining on the map for Classic at this point. So this army you can replace it a couple more times we're pretty much getting to what you see is what you get from classic at this point is more probes are going to get sacrificed it's the fist of classic coming here 32 minutes into this game he understands that yeah he's not going to get this bottom right side base again he's not going to be able to take the upper left and even if he does he doesn't need more than 13 workers he's going up to 187 180 uh 186 army supply He's just building this massive army and wants to sledgehammer through. Again, a Corruptor is... Uh, they're going to need some more significant storms, but... Oh, man, that's so low. One Archon shot pops all the Corruptors, and then, well, yeah, we're talking about classic lack of a gas bank. Rogues isn't much better. Uh, I guess technically it is double, but... Rogue can't support a full, a full gas remax either, is the important thing we got to talk about. Uh, so this army is still scary more... Does Rogue... Oh, he's got the larva for it. I think he's just thinking about what he wants to make. And oh, man, these fungals on these high Templar is are so good. That's gonna be one that's gonna pop right now. There we go. It's it's dead. A classic five more carriers. Not a ton of gas here. Storm's gonna go down, and well, microbial shroud doesn't keep you safe from storms. Actually, that's a lot of dead interceptors. We gotta start paying attention to this. This is uh, what are we looking at? It, it, this. Yeah, 246 dead interceptors. Even if they're... I forget actually how much an interceptor costs, but even if we are doing that, I mean, that it does bulk out a little bit. But uh, Classic, I really think he wants to take this... I mean, this is... If he can take this north side base, that is his lifeline. That is so much gas remaining, so many minerals remaining. That really matters because Classic, again, he's, he's totally parched on gas. 
and this army you need gas for high templar you massive gas for archons and carriers and you know xyz so he's gonna go and he's gonna clear the he's gonna clear all this creep up and i think we're gonna see yeah probe over moving over to the left side 14 workers he doesn't really need to mine minerals at the moment it's just gas but he needs to mine this base <laughs> that, that is the long and short of it creep eventually is gonna clear up starting a long distance mine right now storm doesn't really get a ton And look at where we're at right now. So we're at 7,000 Delta, not 10. Rogue, is, Classic's starting to trade a little bit stronger. And there is a far, and if he can mine out of this base, there is far more than a 7,000 resources loss differential between Rogue mining out half this base and say if Classic gets the entire north side base, if he mines that out. Really, again, that resources, the, the resources gathered versus resources lost will very much favor Classic. Rogue, you know, he's... Well, his economy is okay. We're also going to start to see him mine out fairly quickly. Not a lot of minerals here. Uh, he got the wall he can mine, technically. Uh, so, technically true. Can, uh, classic can, can as well. So, I guess there is that. Look at Rogue moving a little bit further forward. He doesn't have the map control that he once did. That's kind of important to point out. Our spore count is not in units. Our spore count is at 21, down from like 56. So, you know, there is that. There's less map control. And Rogue also doesn't really want to build any more spores at this point. He's at this situation where 13,000 minerals sounds like a significant bank. It really isn't. No more than 14 and 2. That's pretty much an army and a half from other players. Oh, man, that that slow zone is really solid. But a mothership will fall. Um, Like an army and a half for both players. It really doesn't reconstitute the significant uh free max potential that you would like so wasting a bu wasting a bunch of money on spores doesn't really seem as applicable anymore that was kind of more of a mid-game thing while we were waiting to get full upgrades and full kind of uh spellcaster setups for, for rogue at this point now links are gonna oh links are gonna get right on top of these high templar they're gonna knock one down microbial shroud keeps everything alive and well a lot of interceptors are gonna get fungled and I love that despite having a 3090, despite having a, you know, really solid CPU, when we see these big fights happening in the late game where you got a microbial shroud dropped and a fungal dropped and interceptors out and maybe a para bomb, and it's just like, yeah, we're, we're going to see some framiness. I'm sorry about that. I have a really solid PC, and, uh, you know, there's not a lot I can do. <laughs> I can't do what I mean. Oh, nice abductor. That's a free carrier. And that's even with the, with everything, all the, uh, the changes that have been made. There we go. That's what the number is. 15 minerals per interceptor times 200. 3,000 uh, minerals lost or so. 3, 4,000 minerals lost. This base is rapidly running out of money. Like, we looked over just a little bit ago, and there was some, but there... I mean, I guess this is a... These are two hefty mineral patches. I'm not, not quite sure how that one works, Rogue. I mean, how'd you manage to go and mine... All these mineral patches out to totally, and this still have a thousand minerals on two patches. It's a little bit funky, but uh, so what do we got here? A thousand minerals ish on the bottom right base, another 60 here, and then this base starting to mine out pretty quickly, too. Another 2,000, 3,000 minerals. Classic's got like classic has well, trading wise is gonna do a little bit better as the microbial shroud precast. I like that one. Hong is gonna get dropped on this army as well. Lurker's gonna unburr him, move forward. Bailing and storm is fine, but. Doesn't really take damage from much else at the moment. And Rogue continues to hold the high ground. The, the banks are starting to get much more similar. And Rogue, hmm. Morphing in a ton of Banes. So what are we looking at? We're looking at three High Templar. Really not a lot of gas for a lot more. Even as he's mining a lot of this. Changelings are, are going to run forward. Storms will get dropped. But not to any significant value. And we have to stop. Oh, Banelings are going to bust through the wall and do not much more than that uh i'm not sure why sending banelings into here matters uh are are these banelings like strictly to snipe pylons i i don't think so you know lings are much better there it's not like there's any income <laughs> it's not like there's any economy in the main base the natural the third base the fourth base the fifth base the sixth base of classic the sixth base of rogue is a uh, abducts on in knocks in, knocks an oracle down feedbacks are good mothership dead immediately 
That's the big trade. And also a lot of interceptors dying. I mean, we're looking at 100 interceptors off of 16. <laughs> oh, it's funny. You talk to Protoss players and I'm like, oh yeah, what's your late game? Like, what are you going, what do you want to do late game? And they're like, well, actually, I think getting a decent amount of Tempest is good. I think carriers are kind of trash at a certain point. And I mean, Classic's on, he's sitting here on 16 Tempest. Granted, it, it's Tempest carrier as the Lurkers are going to run forward. Big Fungal on a bunch of these High Templar once again, knocking them down. No, oh, God. Oh, how'd that survive? Oh, that. Mm. Joey is not sparked, but now the Lurkers can start to put a little bit more pressure on Microbial Shroud defending these Lurkers. They're just not popping. I love how aggressive Rogue is being with these Microbial Shroud. It's so cool seeing players come back from the military. Feedbacks are really good, though. Lurkers try to burrow on top of everything. How good's our Fungal here? I Templar, they're not getting popped yet. Not a cost-effective trade for Classic or for Rogue in the slightest feedbacks as well on so many... I don't know. We, we got like one fungal. Suddenly, Classic is really starting to do a good job pushing forward here. Nothing on the ground that really fights this army. I, a bunch of ultras on the way. Do we have ultra upgrades? Really wasn't paying attention. We have, we have kindness. We have, we have all, all the all the ultra upgrades. Okay, Ling's trying to find bottom side. No mining in this base, by the way. That, that's kind of a big deal. Dark does, or excuse me, not dark. Classic does need some worker or some gas mining. And oh, two more Tempus gonna fall down on on the retreat. That looked a little bit scary. There was nothing on the ground. Literally nothing. No no vipers, nothing like that. Dark making a significant tech transition. Classic could have taken a lot of space from Dark. The run by the surround is a really nice job. Ultras start to join the fray a little bit more. And I got, again, I, I'm really surprised that we don't have Broodlords out. I think they would, they're pretty important. Uh, yeah, yeah, Broodlords, Broodlings do less damage. They last not as long. But just that ability to prevent the dive, I think is, I don't know, maybe, maybe Broodlords are, are are that bad that it's not worth it. And not having a siege unit is really not all that worth it. Is uh, Also, Broodlords are really good against a good majority of this army. The, the Ultras just died. I, it's not a good trade. I don't really like this tech transition out of out a Rogue. I, I guess if he drops some Fungals. Feels really awkward. One, there's one zealot the one zealot that could uh but we care about this fight so abduct once again that's a dead carrier immediately gone oh this is it i guess there is one really interesting thing to talk about with this ultra transition there's about a thousand gas that rogue has at this point oh there we go oracle will fall about a thousand gas that or that rogue has in the moment but he is out he is totally tapped here and this gas, this this assimilator mines out very fast, right? There are 250 gas remaining on the assimilator. So the fact that Classic, the minerals, they matter, but they don't really. The fact that Classic's been able to mine out the majority of the gas on this on this base is really, really impressive. But now we're going to see well, a solid fungals. Ultras are going to try to get on top of things. Microbial shrouds. And this is just an absolute shit show of a fight. Corruptors are going to try to dive on top of everything. This is relying on the Remax right now. How many interceptors remain? It's 50. Storms on top of everything. Stalkers warping in here as well. Rogue, I, I don't know about this, bud. He's going to knock down so much of the army, but not everything. And all the Corruptors are dead. 55 supply. Rogue, what are you doing there, bud? That was the craziest thing. Classic takes game two, and we're going to move into game three. What was that? I think uh, the other thing that's important here is it's really hard to judge these late games. And I think Rogue might have thought that Classic was in a better gas position than he was. Because Rogue was out of gas mining. He knew that. He had 2,000 gas in the bank. And I think he just may have assumed that he was in a either a better or a worse position than he was. Because like maybe a better position of, oh, you know, I can go and you don't have any gas, I don't think. If I kill all, if I kill all this, you're going to warp in Zealots. Like, okay, fine. Um is maybe one thought and then he just lost the fight horribly bathed in storms it was just bad uh or the other thought is okay well classic is really far ahead by taking this base like i really need to go and kill him or the game is over and because i'm eventually going to get out mind and uh, you know i i think both those are valid i don't think they were the correct reads i think rogue was still in a really solid spot if you kind of continued to poke and prod away it can doesn't matter how many minerals are at that base you're gonna, what are you going to do? Build a bunch of Zealots against uh, late game Protoss? Uh, late game Zerg? 
that would theoretically have the gas to spare to build a bunch of ling bane the very light a bunch of bane lings and just blow up all the zealots um or lurkers or ultras or whatever you know just something that deals with with zealots really nicely yeah you're, you're not right there, there's not a lot there so i think dark I, I think not dark i think rogue was in a really solid spot i think he was still pretty reasonable in that game but uh, i can understand why rogue might have thought otherwise and also remember rogue is recently back from the military right that, that's kind of the other important thing to point out here rogue's recently back from the military he has obviously been grinding the fact that he's sitting here in his 1-1 against classic and really should have won game two is kind of crazy actually considering just how good classic has been in the last uh 12 months or so i mean he's always getting shut down by dark but <laughs> uh that's just it's one of those things it's like i don't know i'm trying to think of a good example like who just it's like so so like Cyril having maru's number right no one would argue that argue against or no i probably maybe a better example is there's rainer having rogue's number or rainer having excuse me Cyril's number where like even when Cyril was obviously the better player and i'm not saying that that is true right now you can't even see he was but i'm not saying that that's true at any given moment uh point being even when Cyril was kind of obviously stronger rainer just had his number uh on his come up in a way that was pretty cool to watch actually because we had all these rainer serils finals in uh, the european regionals and it's like wow we, it's, yeah sure zvz but Cyril rainer zvz is super cool um and rainer won a lot of them uh, back three years ago i think two three years ago and it's kind of a similar situation here is by the way classic golden phoenix out of this is pretty cool as we see a couple more gateways so this is four gate twilight yeah this is going to be a delayed glaives timer this is something that stats used to love to do before the militaries uh well overlord gets shut down but jokes on ya classic jokes on ya jokes on you classic you thought you shut down the scouting you thought you were able to prevent your opponent from being able to see what's up and yeah unfortunately rogue couldn't hide that he saw that the overlord shows up so immediate about switch he's like yeah i was going glaives no longer I, Twilight's on the way. I'm adding in that that forge. We're, we're adding gateways. Uh, no, this is not going to happen. Oracle's nice job diving. Five drones go down. But he was going for it. He thought about it. He was getting himself set up for it. And you know, he's just going to have to change his mind a little bit. Really immaculate scouting from Rogue. So now, Classic's in this awkward situation where he got his tech a little bit more out of order. As, oh, uh, Stasis Trap oh that's a nice one there's one two okay that's three drones but it's two queens that are just not allowed to inject for a while they're not allowed to fight for a while they gain their energy sure but they're just lacking production just a tiny bit unfortunately rogue the queens were in the right spot and all drones have returned to mind and the queens were in the right spot but a drone triggered it and that's not great. Oh, okay. That, yeah, we were talking about players having players numbers. And none of them. And we're also, I'm seeing people talk about Maru having Shin's number, which is a great example. Yeah, that's probably a pretty good. And, uh, well, I don't know. I'm torn about it because like, you know, Shin round of eight, Akatavitsa last year, round of four, two years ago, like a uh, decent GSL run. Get knocked down by by stats unfortunately right uh if you're if you're a shin fan if you're a stats fan you're ecstatic and uh, as someone who i want stats to succeed makes me very happy uh that being said regardless you know i'm looking for someone where it's like two players are pretty much on the same level but one just dominates the other for whatever reason um raider having max packs is number late you know actually uh, max packs having clem's or clem having max packs is number is probably another one but that that does go back and forth it has not gone back and forth for uh for classic and dark for a while i remember even like before military dark, dark would just go and smack classic uh in a way that was a little bit depressing uh, but anyways anyways we got this big attack coming out of rogue it's roach hydra ravager tons of stuff storms on the way just trying to take advantage of this fact that yeah yeah sure Classic got a ton of stalkers he absolutely does but it's also a little bit of an awkward time and catching there ideally before storm's gonna go down 
Biles to shut down or trying to shut down this stack defense, but the Biles aren't really landing all that well. Now the stack defense is going to go down here. Oracle is dead. Immortal's going to show up and, and get knocked down very quickly. The, the static defense, the shield batteries are not really defending much of anything. Rogue getting right on top of this base. Classic's buying time for Storm. He's going to have four storms as this fight happens. We're kites backwards. First storm does not land. Lift on the second one. There we go. La Ravager still stays around. Second storm also not doing a ton here. And Rogue is in a really nice position. Third storm, I guess it knocks some of the Ravagers down. More on the way. The third base, the Classic's dead. He's got a fourth base, sure, on the way. But now all the storms are gone here. Even still tries to get on top of the Immortals. Looks to knock them down. Hardened Barrier is going to do what it can, but it will not do enough. Now, eventually, it feels like Rogue's army is probably going to get shut off. I mean, this is a really good concave from the Stalkers. But Rogue, I think, let's see. He's got, yeah, he's got the Stalker on the bottom side. He's losing a lot of Hydras, losing a lot of Ravagers. That's, that's a decent amount of, of gas. That's actually a significant amount of gas. But... Still remaxing. He's still up. Double army supply. He's got his fourth base on the way. A rogue. Uh, he's up in workers. Classic. He's got this fourth base up. And he's just going to go for round two, I think. I just Obviously, you don't want to attack. You don't want to just kind of continue to feed reinforcements in. That's how you lose a lot of stuff. But you, will, you wait for your reinforcement setup to go and to reset to get it all together and then you might need to go across the map again now this time again there are more storms they're ready for the first fight four storms on the map i think is this fourth base is just gonna get canceled once again so classic really his economy is is not incredible at the moment but neither true true as rogues not really he's got his four bases technically he's only on 61 drones though he is pretty all in on this we don't have any plus two on the way we don't have any tech development on the way. Looking for that surround. Looking at that concave storm. Number one is okay. But we're looking at two, three, and four. Second one lands on the, on the roaches. Fairly nicely. Storm. Third one on the Hydra. That's starting to do a little bit more. And where's our fourth? That one's center mass. But Rogue, he's going to try to get on top anyways. I don't know how many more storms there exist. All the immortals on the backside trying to show up here. Rogue dives on top of the High Templar as well. Stalkers are starting to fall. But these immortals on the back line. Zealous warped in right on top of things. Is actually doing it significant amount but even still man this army is really really strong from rogue Ro roaches you get shut down stalkers on the right side another immortal's dead and it's all about the lings i think at this point the lings and the reinforcing power of this army stalkers continue to kite away we got archons on the backside, so i guess not about the lings anymore but now the queens have run forward here rogue really thinks he can win this game in the next 30 seconds does rogue know you can't <laughs> does rogue know you can't transfuse off creep that's a really important question, and I don't know that the answer to it. There was a change that happened when Rogue was back in the when Rogue was in the military. Does he know? Once again, we're seeing Rogue take these really cost-effective trades. Like the fact that he's he's on this he's on like Ling Roach Hydra Ravager, which is a crazy. Generally, you get Ravages or Ravagers or Hydras, but the fact he's on both is pretty cool. And he's trading he's denying my a base from the from the protoss player but also as importantly he's trading better than the protoss player has on a army that's not meant to trade more cost effectively so much as it is meant to you know switch it you just build it so quickly right it, it, you build so much of it the classic again he's sitting here on really closer to six storms with these high templars now and and rogue I almost expected to see him drone up a little bit after that second attack. I He kind of acknowledged that maybe it's going to be a little bit harder to go, but nope, he's just maxing out again. <laughs> he's got some army on the left side, again, trying to deny this base, but this is also just baiting the army out of position. So Observer will go down, Ling's die as well, but now attacking on the right side with the other part of his army here. Some static defense will fall. He's going to knock down some pylons, maybe get a high Templar. He Oh, he could have dived a high Templar with those roaches, but... They're just going to back up for now. Attack on the left side. Storms maybe cast. Yeah, two storms. Okay, that, that's what's forcing that. That's really what's forcing that army back. And storms are such a good force multiplier. They make it really They make it really so hard for the Zerg player to multi-prong as well as they would like. Yeah, you can still take a big fight. But 
do have to be careful that being said our cons getting targeted down eventually plus two attacks gonna be done in a second but nice a little bit of an anti-timing that rogue is able to hit before classic is totally ready more archons are gonna fall down attack on the right side storms they're gonna force those back but on the left we're gonna see a bunch of high templar go down immortal getting targeted down by these hydras taking that high ground position classic is in a really rough spot and by the way this attack that we're seeing rogue do we actually it's, it's something that's been hitting the meta a little bit more i think we've been seeing dark do it a decent amount to max packs max packs generally holds storm as the delayed timing plus one blink stalkers as the earlier timing they actually do a really nice job against this you it's very holdable but classic unfortunately was not quite prepared for it it's a full 360 surround coming in from rogue right now he's got some army on the right side looking to shut down some production maybe storms i mean i can't even cover the screen storms aren't really getting enough done army getting on top of everything here the immortals are gonna get tapped right on down and look at this rogue in the round of 32 is in an incredible position looks like he's just gonna go 2-1 classic he should have 2 0 him rogue takes him down two weeks back from the military he's on to the round of 16.